What's up everybody, Pete here from the Sunday Drive and today we're going to show you how to change the spark plugs on your X3 with the N52, this is the 28i, so let's get into it. So welcome back to the channel, today we're going to be showing you how to replace the spark plugs on your X3 28i. Now this is a 2011 and the model code is F25. However, it comes equipped with the N52 engine. Now, there's a lot of acronyms and numbers in there, but basically this is the last year, uh, about midway through this year, they switched over to the turbocharged engines. So the N52 was removed from this car later in 2011. This was the facelifted after the E-Series. So if you have the non-turbo engine, it's the N52. I really like this engine because even though it doesn't have the turbos, it's very reliable and it has enough oomph to do what I need it to do. But uh, yeah, it's a very reliable engine, and today we're gonna replace it, the plugs with these Bosch plugs, but we also have NGK plugs, there's options. We'll check the description below, and anytime you purchase those parts through us, it does help us out a lot. Be sure to check that out, and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop the hood. There is a lever by your left foot in the driver's seat area. It takes one pull, unlike the newer BMWs, which take two pulls on some of them. There is a release handle right here on the driver's side. Push this lever towards the driver's side, and that will release the hinge. And as you can see, the spark plugs are under this engine cover. So in order to remove this, we're going to need a 5 mil hex key. So these are the bolts we will be removing. I took one out just for uh, display purposes. And this is an H5 or 5 mil hex key or an Allen key. You're going to want to use a short one because back here, there's not a lot of clearance, right? So it's tight. So we're going to use a combination of this easy red flexible head, very thin and slim uh, ratcheting wrench. It also allows you to use bit adapters, which are very convenient for using the quarter wrench side. There is a link to the description of this tool below if you want to purchase one. And we're using a five mil blue point socket. The tolerances on these are great. So once you get it loose, you can actually take the socket off of the tool and just do it by hand. And don't drop it behind the engine. All right, remove the front ones. Now this will lift up. There are two push blocks over here. So as you can see, there's these little hooks here and they push into these rubber gaskets right here. All right, so while we're in here, we're going to go ahead and also replace these coil packs. Now these are coil on plug packs. They literally sit directly on top of the plug. So to remove them, just pull up on this lever like I just did, and it ejects the plug side. And there you go. Very simple. Usually these come out pretty well. Sometimes these can tear, which can be a total pain in the butt. So be very careful when you pull these out. I already pulled this one out, so I knew it was gonna come out easily, but I'm not sure about the other five. All right, so we'll just pull out the rest of the coils. They're a little crunchy from sitting there for a while. All right, so now the last one is underneath this metal bracket. So you will need a 10 mil, and also you'll have to pull this wire out of the holders. This goes to your uh, battery jumper. There's a uh, terminal up here, if your battery goes dead, for you to jumpstart your car or provide it power if the battery's dead, because the battery's in the trunk. It's very short, so be careful. Now I can move this bracket out of the way and get this last coil pack. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the wires from them all. I'd say difficulty rating, this is a Two out of five, maybe not even, maybe a one. The only reason it would turn into a four is if these start breaking off in there. Then you're gonna need to come up with some fancy ways to extract it before you can get to the plug. Now, so far, they've come up pretty easily, but a trick would be to use a tool, like in our case, we have one of these lying around. You can use it to uh, stick through this hole and then you can get on either side of it and you can pry up on it. I'll do that one more time in the back. So you can stick it in here, get on both sides. Next up, we're gonna use a 3 8 inch wrench and a 16 millimeter spark plug removal tool. This is nice, has a swivel head, 
and usually they have a magnet on the tip to pull the spark plug out with it. Those usually fall out based on how much we use this one, but uh, if you have a new one and you rarely use it, it will hold up and the magnet will work. So go ahead and get on the plug. Make sure you're on it all the way. You don't want to strip it out. I'm going to break these all loose. And so it's easiest to remove the plugs when the engine's still warm, but you don't really want to install them when the engine's too warm. You want it to be kind of cold, to be honest, because uh, if you install them when they're warm and then things cool down, they can get se seized into the engine. So you want to let the engine cool down before you reinstall the new plugs. So the full length tool isn't able to clear some stuff back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a shorter tool. Surprisingly, 5 8 also is the same as 16 mil, it's dead on. So let's see if I can get this back here in one piece. There we go. And last one, hopefully it's not a paint. <sighs> so now that I've got them all started, try and use the electric tool to remove them. And there's the first spark plug removed. All right, so now we're going to go and look at the gap of these plugs and compare them to the new plugs. So I have three shims here, three gauges. Usually we only use one. Each one of these is about, this one's 0 0.021, 0 0.022, and 0 0.023. So add them all up, you get 0.065, and it can fit. There's a still clearance in there. So this is way too large compared to the OEM spec. Now for comparison's sake, here's a new one. And I have an 020 and an 021. Stack those up. And as you can see, that fits nice and snug. So it's an 041, which is with an OEM spec. These plugs do come pre-gapped as you just saw, but if you do need to gap them, you can use a tool like this where you can put the plug into here, like so. And close this gap using this knob. So we're not gonna get into it in this video, but we'll have a whole video showing how to gap your spark plugs properly if you're interested in that. So be sure to check it out. So we're gonna install the new plugs. Always start them by hand, never with a power tool because you can instantly cross thread them and then you're in for a world of hurt. And we do not apply anti-seize to these because we don't want to over torque them and have them get stuck into the head. So anti-seize is good for stopping things from getting frozen, but they also increase the amount of torque that you can apply to something before it uh, gets tight. And uh, that can cause issues when you go to remove it in the future. Another potential issue with anti-seize is that you can over torque something and snap off the top half of a bolt with a head, or in this, in this case, uh, a spark plug. So now I am going to use the power tool, but I'm not going to use it to torque down the spark plug. I'm just going to use it to get it snug, just to where it's touching, and then I'm going to use the torque wrench to get the proper torque. Now as you just saw, it stopped and I was not applying full pressure to this lever. I was barely touching it to where it's, it just starts to move. It can go full speed, but we don't want that. And I just want enough torque where it's starting to seat on the head. Right there, no more. Go ahead and use a torque wrench to apply the proper amount of torque. We'll have this linked in the description below. It's a great torque wrench. It's a gear wrench. This one has 120 teeth, so you get very smooth ratcheting, which is really helpful when you get in a tight spot because, as you can see, I can move the head just a little bit, and I'll get a, I'll get a click. Now, when you're applying torque with the torque wrench, you want to be as smooth as possible. You don't want to, you don't want to jerk the wrench because that can actually give you a false sense of torque. So what you want to do is engage it nice and smooth, and keep a constant speed. Because it takes more torque to start moving something. And once you're moving, it actually takes less torque. So that's how you know you're getting to the proper amount of torque on a bolt. Now if one of these pops out, just go ahead and push it back in. Make sure they're all set in all the way. Now go ahead and install, in our case, your nice new coil packs. 
honestly, it's recommended to replace these. It's not much more money. And they pair with new spark plugs nicely. Although, make sure you go with a reputable brand, either OEM or Dynan. We'll have ones that we trust in the link below, like I said earlier. And as mentioned earlier as well, anytime you purchase things through our links, it, do help, it does help us out tremendously to keep making videos like this for you. And uh, I'm not sure if you've heard about the recent drama, but apps like Honey for saving you money are a travesty. And um, they're terrible if you wanna read into that, but they hurt YouTubers tremendously. And they also hurt the consumer, basically an antitrust situation where they're working with companies to not even give you the lowest price like they advertise. You wanna make sure that these are all the way set down. And I just wanna show you something real quick here. I'll pull this one back out. There's a notch here on the uh, valve cover right there. That's where this triangle will sit. So make sure you line that up. Like so. Pull all the levers straight up. Now you can insert the electrical plug. So there you go. As you can see, I had it straight up. I'm wiggling this in. It clicked. Now go ahead and pull the lever all the way down. It will draw the plug in to be fully seated. So here's again. Go ahead and start pushing the plug in. Back time I got two clicks before I used the lever. So we got all those in. Now we can reinstall this metal bracket. One 10 mil here and one 10 mil down here. All right, go ahead and reinstall your engine cover. I'm gonna start by bringing it over more towards the passenger side and then lining it up with these rubber gaskets here that I showed you earlier. Lock it in. I can't pick up on it, so it's locked in. And I'm gonna line it up with the four bolt holes. All right, so there you go. That is how you change the spark plugs and coil packs on your 2011 X3 28i with the M52 engine. Now let's go ahead and start her up. So what I'd like to say is, if you found this video to be helpful, please give us a big like and subscribe. And uh, if you would like us to do this work, because we do own a full-fledged BMW shop, we are able to do that. We are in New Jersey, southern, southern New Jersey, near Philadelphia, but we are a short drive from New York and uh, other major cities. So feel free to reach out to us if this is something you'd like us to do for you.